All right, first thing we're gonna do is launch Pro Tools from the dock. Instead of creating a new session or opening a recent project, we're gonna click cancel to close the dashboard. Now we're gonna make our way up to the top and select playback engine from the setup menu. Click the drop down box next to playback engine and make sure your audio interface is selected. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Scarlett 2 in 2 out USB interface by Focusrite. The Scarlett 2 in 2 out has two audio inputs and two audio outputs. My other interfaces have a lot more inputs and outputs, but we're going to keep this simple. Now that we have our interface selected, we're going to click OK. Now let's go ahead and make our way back up to the setup menu. And this time we're going to select IO settings. In a Pro Tools session, signals are routed to and from tracks, sends, and inserts using track input, output, insert, and send selectors. The IO setup allows you to create, define, and name signal paths according to the configuration of your studio and the needs of each project. Setting or recalling your IO settings properly allows you to get audio in and out of Pro Tools, route audio to external analog hardware and back into Pro Tools, route audio and MIDI to different tracks within Pro Tools, allow tracks to share effects and or processing, and also allow you to get more creative during recording and mixing. Most projects you create yourself will likely use the same configuration. Other projects may possibly call for a more unique configuration. So we're going to start on the input tab. Remember, we're working with the Scarlett Focusrite 2 in, 2 out. There's only two inputs on this interface. That's why we only see two inputs here, input one and input two. These two sub paths together, input one and input two, make the main path input one and two. If we name this input by simply double clicking on the name, when we expand this main path and look at the sub paths, they have been automatically named for us. So there are main paths, which is the left and right, and then there are sub paths. The left is input one and the right is input two on the focus right. Let's go ahead and click the default button at the bottom of the screen. This will restore the input settings back to factory default. Now I'm going to go ahead and expand input one and two, the main path, so we can see the sub paths again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name input one and input two. So just like last time, we're going to double click on input one, name the microphone that's currently connected to input one, and then we're going to double click on input two and do the same thing. Unless you're recording on a stereo microphone, there's no need to name the main path because you're using only the sub paths. Now, if you only got one microphone, let's say the only thing you have is an AKG microphone, just go ahead and name input one and just leave input two as input two. With at home studios, normally only one input would be recording at a time. Before we move on to the output tab, I just want to be clear, even though we're going to be recording on input one and that is considered to be the left channel and a stereo input one and two, we're not necessarily going to be recording to the left side of the stereo field. Mono tracks can be placed anywhere in the stereo field from left to right. So we're going to be recording on input one, which would be the blueberry, but we'll keep the pan knob center on the mono track when we record. Now, if you create a stereo audio track and you try to record the stereo input of the focus, right, which would be one and two, and you only have one microphone plugged in. Then yeah, you're going to get audio going only to the left or only to the right. That's why it's important to create mono tracks when you're recording a mono source. Now we're going to make our way over to the output tab. Just like the input tab, we have a list of all physical outputs on the focus right interface. If the amount of outputs displayed do not match the interface you currently have connected, click the default button at the bottom of the screen to restore the factory output settings for your interface. The Focusrite 2 in, 2 out has two physical outputs. Output one is the left speaker. Output two is the right speaker. The headphone jack on the front is linked to output one and two, but has a separate volume control. This allows you to set a different volume for your speakers and headphones. Remember, main paths are stereo and sub paths are mono. We name the sub paths when setting up the inputs because our inputs are connected to mono microphones. 
meaning they are recording one source at a time, such as a vocalist. Let's go ahead and name our main output stereo path, or in this case, our only output stereo path, output one and two after the speakers we have connected. If you don't have a set of studio monitors yet, name this path after your headphones. The idea of naming the signal paths you use is to be able to change an input, output, or bus routing setting during a live Pro Tools session with complete confidence of knowing where you're routing the signal to. The little speaker icon to the right of the main output represents our monitor path, which by default is mapped to the main output one and two. This can be changed here at the bottom by choosing from the drop-down box next to monitor path. Since there are no other outputs on this Scarlett interface, we don't have an option to change the monitoring path. For audition path, I recommend making sure that this is also set to output one and two. In my first video, creating a Pro Tools session, we were able to audition an audio file before importing it into our session. This was only possible because we had our audition path properly set to output one and two beforehand. AFL and PFL, let's set that to output one and two. Now we're moving on to the bus tab. The input tab is for getting audio into Pro Tools. The output tab is for getting audio out of Pro Tools. This bus tab is for routing audio within Pro Tools. If you named your physical outputs on the output tab, those names will carry over to the bus tab. Press the default button at the bottom of the screen, restore the bus tab to factory settings. Depending on your audio interface, you'll see a list of all of the outputs as well as 12 stereo buses for routing audio within Pro Tools. You can inactivate any of these buses by unchecking the box to the left. The check mark next to a bus under the mapping output section represents a signal path that is being sent out of your audio interface. We only have one stereo output on the Scarlett 2 in 2 out. Therefore, only one main path can be mapped to leave the interface. That would be the path that's going to our speakers, Yamaha. All of the other paths you see below will be used for internal routing, basically routing mono and stereo signals within Pro Tools. Aside from mapping outputs, for the most part, your bus settings can be the same no matter what audio interface you're using. By default, Pro Tools starts you out with 12 stereo buses, or we can also say 24 sub paths or mono paths. You might need more paths if you're mixing your song in Pro Tools. You may not need to name a bus until you have found the use for it. Let's name some buses that we will use in almost every session. We're gonna rename bus one and two to Reverb. Rename bus three and four to delay. For bus five and six, we'll rename that the chorus. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to see how we route and use different types of buses and sends in a real Pro Tools session. If all these buses were in use, we can add a new bus by clicking the new path button at the bottom. You can create stereo paths, mono paths, or a combination of the two. The default output bus for both mono and stereo should be set to your studio monitors or headphones, output one and two, in my case, the Yamahas. Moving on to the inserts tab. This tab won't be very useful to us using this type of interface. However, if you do have an interface with multiple inputs and outputs, you can use the insert tab to route audio out of Pro Tools into analog hardware and back into Pro Tools. We won't be looking at the mic preamp tab or the insert delay tab. Contact me for a one-on-one -on -one session if you need more details on that. So now you're thinking to yourself, I did all this work. Do I gotta do this every time I start up a Pro Tools session? Do I gotta do this every time I come into a new session? When will I have to do this? Well, since you did it once, you can export these settings onto a flash drive or onto your hard drive, save these settings so that you can import them anytime you want. How do I export and import my IO setup? Let's do it. On every tab at the bottom of the IO setup, you'll see two options, export and import. You'll also see a checkbox for apply to all tabs. If this box is selected, when you click export or import, all settings from all tabs will be either exported or imported. Unchecking this box allows you to import or export only the settings that you need. 
For example, if I was at another studio, I might only want to import my bus settings since the input and output settings may be different due to the other studio having different equipment. We're going to make sure apply to all tabs is selected and export our IO settings by clicking the export settings button. If you're on the Mac, you'll get Finder. On Windows, you'll get File Explorer. By default, you'll see the following path. Documents, Pro Tools, I.O. Settings. Giving you the opportunity to save your I.O. Settings in the same place where the default settings are. You can change the path to a flash drive or a cloud drive if you need to take these settings with you. We're going to name our I.O. Settings before clicking Save. Now we're going to quit and restart Pro Tools as if we were starting from scratch. Okay, so now we made it back to the dashboard. So we're gonna act like we're setting up a new session and you're gonna see down here under IO settings, the option is selected as last used. We're gonna drop down this box and we should see our option OmniPro Audio. Going forward, anytime we start a new session, you can just choose the configuration that we've already done, saving you plenty of time. Or if you ever open a session and other settings are there, you can just overwrite those. Now in this example, I'm gonna go over importing your IO settings into a session. So I'm just gonna go to recent, open the session that I was working on last week. We're gonna come up here to the top to where it says setup. Select I.O. settings. And now we got the I.O. setup menu. So take a look at the buses on here. We got reverb, delay, chorus. OK. We have another bus down here called beat. We have a bus called headphones, ace lead. Let's take a look at the outputs. Yamaha speakers already, so we're good there. Inputs. Blue, okay, so we got, it says blue instead of blueberry, so we got a blue microphone. So the inputs look fine. I'm just showing here the blueberry microphone is what's on input one, that was the same as our IO settings. The outputs are still the Yamaha, so we don't need to import those. If we needed to, we could have just clicked here, import settings, it'll take you to your IO settings folder, and then we could select OmniPro Audio, but we're already good there. Let's take a look at the buses. So when we look at the buses, we already got a reverb bus, a delay bus. Those two are in use. And the way we can tell that is because they're bold. So there's really no need for us to import um, our I.O. settings. But we, if we needed to, let me just show you how we do that. We would just click import. Select our select the settings that we would like to import, and then we would click open. Pro Tools is going to ask you, do you want to go ahead and just delete the buses in this current session that are not in use? So I would say, yes, they're not in use. Might as well get rid of them. I don't want a bunch of duplicate bus seven eights and bus nine tens. So we'll just go ahead and click yes. And there we go. So let's take a look. One of the outputs that it imported into the bus settings is the Yamaha speakers. Well, we already got that bus right here. So what we can do is just select the Yamahas and delete that path. We don't need it. It imported a reverb and imported delay. We already have those in this session. They're already in use. So let's go ahead and delete those buses as well. Okay. So now we have all of the buses from our IO settings in this new session and any buses that were already in this new session before we did that, they still remain to be in this session. And then we can click okay. When you save a project, the I.O. settings are saved with both the session and the system. If you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified for future videos I upload here on YouTube. Make sure you follow me on Patreon. Uh, check my bio and you'll see the links to all of my sites. Be sure to hit me up for some one on one mentoring at a reasonable price. Again, this is Jace Ace. You're watching OmniPro Audio and I'm out.